Hey, Jake here. For the last couple of years, I've been making my own homemade cartoons, and people often ask me, how do you do that? Uh, it's actually pretty simple, at least this method that I've come up with. There's probably much better ways to make your own animations, but this is the version that I do. Uh, first off, start with a drawing. I like to draw by hand, on paper. Sure, you could do a lot of this on an iPad, but where's the fun in that? So first you start off with a base, and to very simply put it, I like to sketch things out in this non-photographic blue pencil. So this is our little character here. This will be very easy to remove later on, and I'll show you how. If you're using a iPad to draw this, you could just use a different layer to sketch your outline, but when you're doing it on paper, the fun way, you can just take a black ink and focus in on the parts that you want to keep for your character. I want to show you this beatnik character I used in my cartoon Shrimp X 66 because this is one of the more expressive characters that I've done. First of all, start with your base model here. And tracing paper really comes in handy when you're drawing all this stuff by hand. When you have some tracing paper and a very sharp pencil or preferably a mechanical pencil, I got this drafting pencil here. What you can do is just sort of draw his pupils in right in the middle. And then see how much you want them to move. If he looks that way, that's as far as we need the whites of his eyes to go. It looks all the way that way. That's as far as we need the whites of his eyes that way. What if he looks down at his toes? That should be the top. If he looks up at the sky, then that's the bottom. So, great thing about tracing paper is you can flip it around and draw on top of it. And that'll transfer the graphite down to the paper beneath. So now we can see that a little bit. Finish this up with my marker. And this is this big eyepiece. See, when I put this in the computer, I'm gonna delete the space behind his eyes. And I can put this piece back behind him. So once I've drawn some pictures, I scan them into a digital form. Any way you wanna scan them, I just take a picture with my cell phone. I have an app that then turns it into a PDF. And I email myself those PDFs and I open them up with a program called GIMP, which is free to use, free to download editing software that as far as I can tell works just like Photoshop. So here you can rotate your image if you need to. Under image and mode, you want to change the settings of your scan to indexed. And that means it is just black and white. So anything light, like our non-photographic blue pencil, that's just turned to white. Anything dark, like our marker, is gonna turn black. Sometimes I go over here to filters, generic, and a filter called erode will just make my line work a little thicker. And I like to do a bunch of drawings on one sheet of paper just to save paper. But I crop out the image I'm working with at this particular moment. With this fuzzy selector tool here that looks kind of like a wand, you can just delete anything that you select so the background is gone now. And that checkered background you see means it's transparent. And then we can just get our paint bucket tool here and we can pick any color of the rainbow and just start to paint in our character just as we want it. And then you need to export that as a .png. That means it has those transparent areas. It's a very big file, but if it's not a PNG, your computer is going to fill that in with black and then it's gonna be useless to you in Final Cut. So then I bring all my elements into Final Cut. Here you can click on each individual element and you can set in points and out points, how you want it to move, when you want it to move. So in this wide shot with the beatnik, I have a torso and two different leg positions. So I wanna start the torso off screen. So I'll put it right there and hit this button here. will mark all these positioning attributes at this point in the timeline. I want him to come to where he's standing at about that point in the timeline, so I just pull him there and it automatically 
puts a new point on the timeline because it knows that I'm tracking that now. So now when you play it, he glides right into place. So then I'll do the same thing for his leg positions. I want them to end up here at this point in the timeline. So then I just scroll it back and put them where they're going to be there. You might have to watch that play out and do some adjustments, but you can add as many points as you need to the timeline. Okay, now I'll do the same thing with his other pants. Alright, now that I have both leg positions animated how I want them, I just need to figure out how long I want a stride to be, and then cut both of these leg positions. And just delete every other one, sort of checkerboard down across this. And there you have it, a simple one to two position animation. And I'll make the beatnik himself transparent here so you can see that behind him, we've got his eyeballs moving and then we've got his eyelids come into play. And in front of him, we have his different arms coming up and down and moving. That's out of sight. You're about the size of a regular dude. Or maybe just a little bit smaller. So the mouth animations work the same way. I usually do four different mouth positions. I've got a closed, an open wide for your E's and as. I've got an open round version for kind of your oohs and ahs. And then I've got teeth on teeth for your T's, your S's. Um, and then I just scroll frame by frame, listen to the dialogue, and I try to put the most appropriate mouth on there. You can Google animation mouth cycles and see that there's a lot of different mouth positions you can do. And then you can watch Bob's Burgers where it's typically just open and closed. That's, it's as simple as that for them, so that works too. He's a lot smarter than you. Plus, he has a lot more money. It's mostly because he has more money, but it's worth mentioning, he's a lot smarter than you. Now let's take a look at this mutant lizard. I have in the script that Shrimp X is driving down the road. He is disposing of toxic waste on the roadside. Some lands on the lizard and then the lizard mutates. So first off, I drew my lizard here. And then taking tracing paper again, I just need the general outline of what this lizard looks like. And when I apply that over here, I can figure out where I want the extra heads to be, and I can put some slime where it's going to land on the lizard. Just remember, whenever you're using tracing paper and flipping it over, you'll have to, again, flip that image either in your editing software or your photo manipulation software. So here I have this stream of toxic waste on the top layer, top layer, until I get there, then I have to move that layer down behind the lizard, and then I've added the slime on top of the lizard, and now I'll make this lizard transparent here so you can see that the extra heads at a certain point I just pop them up behind the lizard hiding behind his head and then I set the AB points to have these rotate out and there you go it all comes down to different layers. This background, for example, I want a Trimp X car to drive up and then down this hill. So I actually need to split this into two different images so that I can layer one here, Shrimp X's car, then this additional background. And then in my Final Cut software, I have Shrimp X's car go up on this layer. And then once he's at the crest of this hill, I need to make a cut, pull that layer down behind this foreground piece. Here I have Shrimp X going to wind up for a punch. So I draw the character missing an arm. And then using my tracing paper, what I traced out is just kind of the outline of Shrimp X's body without a arm. And then, what I sort of did over here is I just put this down and remember you'll have to flip this but 
and I put down what the shape of this armless shoulder looks like. And then on top of this piece right here, I can build out what the arm that I want. First his wind up arm here and then the punch. And occasionally you do draw multiple things and you can do that as much or as little as you like. It just takes some time. Um, here, for example, I have this nuclear warhead and an anvil is gonna fall, crush this. And I just go, I'm just going one to two. And you'll find that sound effects in the editing process really go a long way to help sell this idea of, of the, what you're trying to animate. So that's about the long and short of it. Feel free to message me if you have any questions, if you see anything in my cartoons that you can't figure out how I did it, or if you have any hangups on the software or the process in general. All right, thanks for watching and good luck making your own cartoons.